Hello, welcome to the Minds and Money Online Connect Global Mining Conference. I'm Niels Christensen, editor with Kitco News, and I get the extreme pleasure today to talk with Frank Holmes, uh, CEO of US Global Investors. Frank, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. you you're you're uh, uh, always a, uh, you're a featured guest on Kitco. It's nice to talk to you uh, on, on another platform. Thank you very much for, uh, for being with us today. Well, it's great to be with you. We got lots of uh, uh, heavy things to punch out on, starting there's, off 2021. There's never, there's never a dull moment in the precious metals markets. Um, you know, I do, to start this off. I actually, I really would love to get your thoughts on this Reddit movement, this this uh, amassing this this organization of of retail investors. Um, is this uh, what what type of trend do you see? In the marketplace right now, with you know, with all of these retailer investors sort of ganging up together, you can't look at it as a singular event. You 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 have to look at uh, a series of things that have layered on each other. And one has been so the, the growth of the internet and different types of social media platforms. Uh, and then you have to take a look at uh, what's happened with this this sort of global virus event and people being locked down. Uh, and when you start to add that together uh, and you're seeing that people do want to make money and they do want to be on the next Apple stock uh, invention. Uh, so this basically all of a sudden becomes a platform and they can't get researched. Merrill Lynch has basically stopped uh, any stocks from being bought under $10 per margin or under $200 million market cap. Uh, there's all these rules, different wirehouses, different rules. But along comes a Robin Hood, which is basically democratizing capitalism because it's, there's no commissions and people can trade anytime they want. The emotions of fear and greed are never going to away, go away. And you're going to have huge events up and down in cycles. But I think it's really important that you've attracted much more sophisticated people than I saw when I went in the mutual fund business in the 90s. We had baby boomers discovering the tech stocks. We had baby boomers buying the heck out of technology stocks for eyeballs. Well, the GameStop has revenue and cash flow. So you have now American Airlines, another company, and you have all, so you have this new element of speculation coming in and you have a democratization of capitalism. I think it's a very important, significant event for what I call price discovery. In a great ecosystem, it can't be just whales. You, they, you don't have price discovery. You need a sort of a barbelling and you need minnows and then you have tunas and then you have dolphins and you have sharks and then you have the whales. So I think what's happened is really fascinating to me is to watch this price discovery. And a lot of these kids have gone to YouTube. They're going to YouTube. And I had this personal experience of watching my Jets ETF go from 35 million in assets to over 3 billion going from 30 trading 35,000 shares a day to three and a half million. And where do they get it? Well, a lot of these kids came through Robinhood and Buffett dumped on the stocks, the airlines, and then they went up 60%. So a lot of made a lot of money. And now we're seeing them discover silver stocks and silver. Well, a lot of these kids understand solar energy and solar panels. And I know my global resource fund switched over and left a lot of the big oil stocks went to alternative energy, and we're crushing our peers uh, because of that switch. Well, it's important to look at silver. So silver is important for solar energy. Silver is important for uh, what your platform is on educating people on precious metals. So now you're going to see them want to go into silver stocks. Uh, and I think this is a brand new venue. So you're not necessarily worried about the increased volatility that we're seeing. I mean, you're, you're, you're more focused on the fact that that more people are are noticing the sector and less on on the volatile moves that we've seen. Absolutely. I mean, anything that comes in that's new and disruptive is more volatile. Tesla is now in the S&P 500. Tesla reports making money. Tesla has the same volatility, DNA of volatility of Bitcoin. It's hard to believe it, but daily it was up and down 70 percent of the time, 5 percent, non event. Same with Bitcoin. Gold is 1%. S&P is 1%. So when you have a new disruptive platform, you're going to experience new adopters, people saying naysayers. 
I can take a look at the creation of Hive blockchain, being invited to that first institutional investor and going as a chairman. We had incredible volatility. I mean, it's amazing to see this past year as crypto has gone up, so is Hive blockchain. I think it's the number four of all over the counter trading stocks in the US and number one in Canada for trading technology stocks, traded 1.7 billion shares. So you see this ebb and flow that's taking place, but what's really important is price discovery. And all these minnows are, are doing homework. They're going, they know, they understand cycles better. They're much more educated than baby boomers in the 90s. So I think it's very positive. Well, and it's, it's, it's we've actually been waiting for millennials to take a look at, at mining stocks. You know, they were big into, into marijuana stocks, you know, big into cryptos. Um, and then, the, you know, just this, this value in, in, in mining. And, and a lot of people actually have been waiting for this, for this millennial money to come in. So, you know, although volatility is high, I guess, you know, careful what you wish for. I mean, we're getting exactly what we wanted. Well, it's, it's not, it, it, there's going to be the greatest transition of capital going from baby boomers to millennials. We're talking about trillions of dollars. And, and you have a more informed uh, group of people uh, that have different ways of looking at the world. They don't like mutual funds. Uh, they like ETFs. Uh, they like individual stocks. Uh, they look for other people on the, on the internet. Look, I really discovered this on, the, on my Jets ETF. This is on New York. Uh, how they're going to, Sam Chu is, uh, has 2.5 million followers. 2.5, educating all these millennials about airlines. They knew what planes to take. There's a young man in, in London, England. He's 19 years old, has almost 300,000 followers educating kids about the airline. I didn't know this a year ago. This is, this is why the airlines ETF all of a sudden exploded because in previous cycles, they did this research that a year later, the airlines are up between 80 and 100%. So they came and speculated with this. Uh, and, and so far they've touched wood, they've made money with it. The vaccine is gonna come out, it's gonna be a game changer. Uh, and I think that still we're going to live in a different world. And, and I think that what's going to happen with these new internet platforms, you just take a look at Kitco, uh, the significance of going on YouTube, uh, the additional revenue that comes from it. Uh, and now you've got a broader base. They use AI for people that are interested in gold and silver. They would automatically all of a sudden come to Kitco's platform. That never happened before. So the democratization of information and research is very, very important. And we've seen out of Europe, uh, this mythic too, that want to shut down conferences. Uh, there's a socialism to the extreme of controlling of capital and it's all gone. It's all taking place with, with YouTubers, Reddit, Twitter accounts, etc. So it's really exciting. Well, see, see how we're on this topic. I mean, let's, let's talk about, you know, sort of millennials versus uh, uh, baby boomers. And, and I get, you know, the next question I have then is Bitcoin versus gold. I mean, you were one of the first uh, major uh, firms to actually invest in, in the infrastructure of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. Um, you know, is, is it a debate of one versus the other, or is it more of they go hand in hand? For me, in my opinion, they go hand in hand. They're an alternative asset class. Uh, bullion has been around for 5,000 years. Uh, you can wear it. You can't wear your Bitcoin. Uh, you don't need electricity to wear your gold. Uh, you need electricity to have a function with Bitcoin. Uh, so I look at it as, as, as really fascinating as Ray Dalio said, it's a heck of a creation. Uh, he's putting in his funds. We have BlackRock, the biggest asset management company in the world, putting in two of their funds. We have Guggenheim. Uh, putting their funds. So there is a game changer. And PayPal, all of a sudden, you go to your PayPal account, you can buy Bitcoin. Uh, and, and so it's becoming more ubiquitous. And there's a simple law called Metcalf's law that says there's more and more people can buy fractions and adapt. And there's a limited supply, the prices go higher. If mining supply halved by 50%, I can tell you gold will be 10,000 uh, next week. Uh, that's what happened this, this past year with Bitcoin's, your rewards, your supply from, from the mining halved. So this is only takes a certain amount of time that like six months and we see this super surge taking place. Now all this money printing 
I would share with you with the democratization of information that's out there. And yes, there's lots of fake news, but still there's lots of great research on the internet that these kids have turned around and taken a look at the at money printing. And I find it interesting on Robinhood, Robinhood is, has a toolbar that has gold as an asset class. That's not at Schwab, that's not at Fidelity, that's not at TD Waterhouse, that's definitely not at Merrill Lynch, uh, but it's at Robinhood. So you have this sort of new sharing of information and this diversification that's important. So when I got into the creation and co-founding of, of uh, high blockchain technology, well, it was interesting because uh, we were mining virgin coins, so we would never have an AML concern, anti money laundering or a KYC because we are the creators of those coins. And now we've seen many new companies come in the US have raised hundreds of millions of dollars uh, getting in the mining space. They've all focused on just uh, Bitcoin. Well, we're on both. We're focused on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, interesting. So you, you've mentioned this actually a couple of times now, the, this, you know, the money printing and, and currency debate. And I, I agree with you. I think you know, gold and, and Bitcoin and well, cryptocurrencies are, are sort of going, are rallying on the same sort of, uh, on the same um, uh, factors in that, you know, we're going to see a lot more uh, fiat currency debasement. Um, you actually had a commentary out this week, um, you're talking about, you know, sort of a new regime. Um, I think we're in the new, you know, we're in the new regime of uh, money printing. And one of the one of the things that, that stood out for me was um, you mentioned that debt is going to be 130 percent of GDP. Um, is this what's going to drive precious metals? Well, I think it's going to drive precious metals. And what people forget is that for the past 20 years, the beginning of this new century, of those 20 years, gold has been positive 16 times. That's 80 percent. And gold has outperformed the S&P 500 by 2.5 times. So 250% better performance owning gold. The largest hedge fund in the world, Ray Dalio's Bridgewater, has an allocation towards gold. So I think that gold will maintain and continue to be an important asset class. The new asset classes like Bitcoin, Ethereum, I think they're going to continue to grow, uh, especially Bitcoin because of the limited, very tight limited supply. Uh, is as a factor. And I believe that in my opinion, that Bitcoin is going to become like art, like Andy Warhol art, a limited number. And over time, all of a sudden the value goes up dramatically. And the fact that you can buy a, a, a sliver of it uh, because of fractals, uh, you can turn around and get more and more people participating in it. So I remain very bullish, but let's not forget art has gone up a lot this past year. Real estate, uh, rural real estate has gone up dramatically. Uh, condos have gone down. New York City is feeling the pain. A lot of England is feeling the pain. Uh, Toronto. But if you go to homes or larger properties just outside the city, they're up 10 to 15 percent. In San Antonio, is the same thing. Uh, and so I think that asset, real assets, because the G20 countries, uh, their central bankers function. A lot of times, the central bankers in as in charge throughout prime ministers and presidents of countries and they have their own country club so they've all collectively are caught up with mmt modern monetary theory of just printing money and distributing it throughout the system to keep the economic engines going so they're working together and i think smarter people with the internet are going to be buying these real assets so i mean very bullish especially on silver because silver has a duality to it not only is it coins and money, it, it's used for solar, uh, solar energy. Uh, and so it comes when I look at London, England, my favorite stock there is Hothschild. Hothschild's from Peru. Hothschild has the largest rare earth deposit in the Western Hemisphere. I think that rare earths and anything like mollies, et cetera, are going to become important because the anti-China movement is not over. So assets in Greenland or assets in Africa, assets that are rare earth or silver are going to become much more significant and important for investors. Um, I just, you, you raise interesting points. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing inflation in, in uh, uh, real assets, you know, uh, real estate, um, commodities, 
um, you know, we're seeing higher prices. But I just, I want to play devil's advocate a little bit and, and ask you about, you know, consumer inflation, you know, like that's, and that's what a lot of people keep their eye on. Um, you know, back in 2008, everybody says that inflation was going through the roof. Um, 10 years later, it never happens. My question is, you know, what makes this time different? I mean, and I know like, you know, it's really difficult to compare, you know, the latest crisis that we've had to, to the financial crisis because it's just so much bigger. But, you know, like what makes this different? Well, John Williams, who has a shadow statistics, uh, it's a newsletter, and, and he's got fascinating research because he goes back and looks at the algorithm that made the determination what you look at for CPI. And if you look at the algorithm that was used in 1980 when gold hit 850, silver $50 an ounce, uh, you would say the inflation numbers would be running at eight to nine percent today. I personally feel that it's fake news or it's way understated that what the CPI number is. I know for building a new house or property, uh, lumber is up 40 percent. There's no inflation. I looked at my food prices from a year ago. There's no inflation. Please, inflation is running eight to nine percent. And so I, I think that uh, this sort of there is no inflation. It's just BS. Uh, and and how they change what we're all looking at is just uh, a, a, a head fake. Mm -hmm. um, I, now I want to get into uh, you know you guys have um, go gold. That's your that's your precious metals uh, um, uh, investment. Uh, uh, so I, I want to ask you, you know, what's for an investor, what's the best way to get exposure to the precious metals or how, how should you build a portfolio? You know, like, um, you know, 10% uh, uh, physical metal, miners, uh, uh, producers, streamers. How, how, do you, how do you make up a portfolio? Well, we talked earlier about risk and your risk profile. Um, you're at risk if you don't own gold for the past 20 years. Uh, I always like to advocate the 10% golden rule that you should have 10% exposure to gold and 5% into a GLD or to gold jewelry. You could buy 24 karat gold jewelry. Uh, and, and then you have, if you're low risk, you have wealthy companies. That's a very superior business model. Uh, they have rising dividends. They have the highest revenue per employee. So I, I, I like that. The GoEU is a quant approach that every quarter recalibrates and has 30% minimum into the biggest royalty companies. And thereafter, looks at those companies that have the strongest momentum in revenue last quarter or four quarters and cash flow. Uh, and we have found over time that's the best way uh, to take a look at picking stocks. Uh, and so I remain you know, very, very constructively bullish. I think 10% is a very prudent number and rebalance once a year. If you're more sophisticated, you follow stuff, you can go up to 25%. Uh, but as you go down that food chain into speculation for a new gold discovery, well, yeah, then have to really be conscious of betting on the jockey. Yeah, not just the gold asset. You have to really know what is the CEO and their management, uh, what's their track record in finding a gold mine or a silver mine and delivering it. So there's very, there's only a handful of great promoters like Ross Beatty has done it many times. Robert Friedland has done it many times. Lucas Lundin has done it many times. So you have to really be conscientious of the jockey who you're betting on. Do you think, so, I mean, you know, third quarter um, earnings for the mining sector was massive. Um, fourth quarter is supposed to be really good. I mean, do you think, you know, what's, what's your thought on like, I, the value in the marketplace in that, you know, like stocks are so undervalued, but these companies are making money. I mean, if Tesla had the, the margins that some of these mining companies had, I can't even imagine where that stock was. And yet mining companies are just ignored. When do investors get into well, the sector? Do you think? You're seeing last year for the first time in over 15 years, that gold stocks like Franco, Curtin Lake, Franco, Nevada, were showing up in the IBD, Investors Business Daily, top 50 stocks based on their seven factors. Uh, and, and one of those is really growth and momentum in revenue, Q over Q and year over year, and earnings Q over Q and year over year. 
the fact that out of all the stocks in the world, that these stocks are all of a sudden populating. We saw this in 2003, four and five, where gold stocks all of a sudden were making the IBD. That audience of buyers is much bigger than a handful of gold fund managers and gold stock lovers. So they are basically looking for that revenue. So I'm a big believer that gold stocks are going to have this other sort of secular move. Uh, they did well last year, especially going into August. They corrected more than bullion last year, which surprised me. Uh, but if you focused on those companies that had the strongest revenue per share and cash flow and free cash flow, they actually outperformed. Uh, and they outperformed the market, they outperformed gold. So I, I think that that's saying to me that the generalists are coming to buy these gold stocks. They're gonna show this quarter free cash flow. So when I look at the 100 gold producers around the world, uh, their median was still negative um, in September of last year, in December of last year, and then in March of 2020 was the first time they went positive, a positive, and the S&P went negative. So this quarter we're gonna see uh, gold stocks are gonna have just beautiful free cash flow yields. They're gonna have strong growth and momentum, especially on a year over year basis in gold. Um, I like ending on that optimistic note. Um, I actually can't wait for, for the earnings season to come out because yeah, I think it's gonna be really exciting. We're gonna see really lots of profits. Um, and remember, for- if you're not long, you're wrong. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was gonna, I was gonna cue you up though. Um, Frank, thank you very much for your time. This has been a fascinating conversation. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Have a happy investing. Be safe and be healthy. Thank you very much for tuning in to Minds and Money. Stay tuned for more content.